Um, okay, so uh, topic that regularly comes up in conversation. I know this is not going to um, be sort of geared to everybody who watches the video, but for those that do watch it, hopefully it gives you some help and insight. Um, is what to do in the build-up to a competition uh, if people compete in the sport of fitness, we're going to call it. Uh, so CrossFit competitions, local competitions for the most part for people that we work with here. Um, what to do building up to them, what to do after them. Okay. So this is uh, kind of a general overview of it. Uh, I know with all things being equal, not everyone is exactly the same, but um, in my experience, I'm going to try and give you um, sort of what I feel are best practices. Um, I always think about, um, I, I think back to sort of my sporting or athletic background, and I try and always think about that in terms of how I approach that, in terms of how I approach competing in CrossFit. Um, if you, to give you an example, a week leading up to a big competition, say you were uh, competing in, there's the, uh, 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 say a big competition like the, the World, Swimming Athlete, uh, World Swimming Championships that have just happened, or the World Athletics Championships which are coming up in London. Say someone was going to compete in uh, an event, um, they would generally, in the, in the week leading up, maybe even longer depending on the, the given sport, is they would do some form of taper. Um, a taper is basically a, a drop down in overall volume of training. Um, they may still keep a little bit of intensity there to keep a state of readiness about them, but generally in the days leading up to a big event, they would drop down their volume. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to then to have some sort of peak. Um, and the same thing can apply to CrossFit competitions. Um, say you've got a weekend event on a Saturday or Sunday, um, either or, um, you would drop down you know, two, three, four days before the the, the level of training that you're doing. Um, the, the reasons that that are important and the, the mistakes that I sometimes you see people make is that they will train um, hammer and tong right up until the day before that they, they're going to compete. They actually just go in tired um, and, uh, and aren't able to perform as best that they can. Um, I think it's, it's, it's common because people skip uh, the nature of CrossFit is that you don't necessarily know what you're doing all the time right until the point you actually do it um, and people get this kind of panic when, when events are released and they want to practice them, they want to do them, um, even if it's going to be a you know, detriment to, to how they feel. Um, whereas you know, if you take a traditional sport like rugby or football or athletics or something, the people don't know what they're going to be doing so they, they can sort of plan for a taper much easier. Um, but with cross, I think the, the mistakes that are sometimes made is that people are in the day before practicing and establishing loads of, of, of events that have just been released. Um, it's not my, my, my recommendation to do stuff like that. Um, kind of looking post-competition, um, another mistake that I see people make is that they'll potentially return to training too soon and not take a break. Um, Naturally, people are on a, an adrenaline high from a, a, you know, a great event that they, or they've had on the weekend or team competition that they've been part of, and uh, they will uh, not take the, the, the recommended or the necessary rest post-competition, and they'll just run off that adrenaline, they'll go straight back into training, um, and then you know, it won't show its, so its true face in, initially, but weeks down the road, um, it'll come back to bite them in the ass because they'll be tired mentally, physically, they may run into injury because they've got little niggles from the competition, which they've not let heal. Um, so I'd always recommend a period of downtime um, after a competition as well. You know, that's going to be uh, on an individual basis. I think people who I've worked with here for a long time and got best practice will trust that they need at least a week off, maybe more in some cases, depending on your training age and how how long you've been doing this. Um, but I think for everybody, you've got to take some time off afterwards and, and don't run into the mistake of coming straight back into things. So hopefully it gives you a bit of an, a sort of general overview of you know what to do in the lead up to a, an event, a competition. Um, sort of taper things down, drop down the volume, maybe keep a little bit of intensity there. Um, have your competition, plan some downtime afterwards. You know, um, and planning your long-term in advance of these things is going to allow for Long, continued long-term progression if you compete, um, uh, a love for it as you go along the way and, and simply not to burn yourself out physically or mentally. So we hope that helps.